Greetings and salutations, fellow pilots. This is Akira Shin. One of you has queried me about the British Tier 10 fighter, the Supermarine Swift, which you are looking at right now. A lovely aircraft, great lines, and a pleasure to fly. And you wanted to know what sort of build should you go with on this aircraft? And uh, basically, is it a good fighter? And I hope to answer those questions in this video. The Swift features two 30 millimeter cannons, each of which do 330 damage per second with a rate of fire of 300 rounds per minute and an effective firing range of 800 meters, which is quite nice. I do have this aircraft at specialist level. Now, before we get into that, let's go over some general characteristics of the aircraft. Uh, it has high air speed. It accelerates quickly when boosting. It has good maneuverability in horizontal turns, but notice it does not have high maneuverability or very high maneuverability. It is also said to be very effective in intercepting aircraft at high altitude. So all that being said, at the specialist level, what equipment do we have? First of all, I have gone with the advanced gyroscopic sight, which offers 11% accuracy, a forward firing offensive armament, 5% increase in chance of inflicting critical damage, and 5% accuracy when firing at maneuvering targets. All of that at the cost of a minus 9% to pilot's resistance to injuries. Now, we could have gone with cockpit armor, which increases cruise resistance to injuries. However, if you went with that, you would lose aircraft maneuverability. Now, this aircraft is kind of a zoom and boom fighter. However, while it is a zoom and boom fighter, I do believe that maneuverability is still critically important for the Swift and aircraft like it. The reason is that even when you are zooming and booming, you need to have good maneuverability. For example, if you are zooming in, striking an enemy aircraft and zooming out, first of all, you will want to turn around as soon as possible to re-engage and make another run, but also many times that aircraft you have attacked or other aircraft in the vicinity, enemy aircraft, will try to chase you down. Now, zooming out and keeping your energy up, you gain distance and then you want to flip around and re-engage that aircraft that is chasing you. Uh, if you have good maneuverability, you can make that turnaround in short order and be in position to attack the pursuing aircraft. However, if you have poor maneuverability, it's going to take a lot longer for you to get turned around and the pursuing aircraft may be upon you uh, before you have an opportunity to fully complete your turn. And you so don't, and so you're not in as good a position to be able to engage that uh, pursued aircraft. And you know the other option is to just keep running uh, as far as you can until you just outdistance the enemy aircraft that's pursuing you. But then you spend all your time trying to uh, flee the scene, if you will. And I, I would rather be able to re-engage as soon as possible to be relevant to the battle. So I do think that maneuverability is still very important in this aircraft. And it's not, you know, poor maneuverability. It's got good maneuverability. So there's room for improvement. It's already fast enough. So we don't really need to do much in that regard. In terms of the airframe, I went with improved lightweight wing frame, which increases roll maneuverability by 7.5%, which is very nice. This aircraft, uh, I found, does roll 
quite nicely. Also, a plus 2% in maneuverability in turns. Now, we could have gone with reinforced skin, which increases wings and tails resistance to critical damage, but we would have lost aircraft speed. Don't want to debuff that strength for this aircraft. We could have gone with reinforced airframe, which increases aircraft hit points, but we would lose maneuverability. And I, and I think this aircraft's defensive measure is its speed and decent maneuverability. So I don't know that we really need the extra hit points. Finally, we could have gone with polished skin, which increases aircraft speed, but at the cost of aircraft maneuverability. Again, I think this aircraft is fast enough, so I just don't know that we need all that much more speed but we do have a lot of room for improvement in maneuverability. For the engine, in our first slot, we went with improved lightweight power unit, which increases yaw maneuverability in 4%. Eh, pretty useless. Don't do a lot of yawing in this aircraft. But you do get a 1.8% increase in maneuverability in turns. Uh, the cost of that is minus 8%. In the engine's resistance to critical damage but again with the speed of this aircraft and and the decent maneuverability I think we can avoid a lot of engine damage problems a bonus characteristic for this particular piece of equipment is plus one percent acceleration without the boost which is very nice our other options were engine armor protection, which increases the engine's resistance to damage, but we lose speed. I don't want to lose speed in this aircraft. That's one of its great strengths. We could have also gone with combined injection boost system, which increases boost efficiency, but you would lose boost availability, and I really want that boost available as much as possible. In our second engine-related slot, we went with stock Uprated engine, which increases acceleration without boost by 2% and cruise speed by 1%. We have a 5% decrease in resistance to fire, though, as our negative. For forward firing weapons, I went with stock long gun barrels, which increases by 4% the firing range of forward firing offensive armament at the cost of a negative 3% in burst length of forward firing offensive armaments. I really like to be able to put rounds on the target as soon as possible, so having that extra range is really nice. All right, so I typically use uh, my consumables to try to ameliorate or make better some of the negatives in our equipment. So for example, where we have an increase in pilot injury because, because of our sight, that we have equipped. We have a minus 9% pilot's resistance to injury, so I went with emergency medical kit, which heals injured crew members and provides resistance to injury for 10 seconds. So that helps to kind of offset that increased chance that our pilot is going to be injured due to our equipment choice. With the improved lightweight wing frame, there is a minus 6% decrease in wings resistance to critical damage as I discussed and so to help to augment or to offset that I went with secondary control system which restores controllability of wings and tail so if, if we do get that critical damage to our wings or tails and there uh, we lose controllability as a result we can get it back with that consumable with our improved lightweight power unit, we did suffer a minus 8% decrease in engine's resistance to critical damage. So to offset that, I did go with emergency engine restart. So if our engine does get re knocked out, we can repair that damaged engine. Also, with an aircraft that its speed is, is its lifeblood, we want to get that engine back up as soon as possible. Also, uh, because we want to keep our, our speed up as much as possible, uh, and especially when we really need it, I did go in our second engine consumable slot with emergency engine cooling, which improves the engine cooldown rate by 5% for 10 seconds. That's really nice to have.
again, another defensive measure that we have to offset some of our negatives like you know loss of hit points or things like that. For our forward firing weapons, did go with universal ammunition, which increases chance of causing fire and inflicting critical damage. So there again, you see where we have used our, uh, we have good synergy between our equipment and our consumables. They work well together. For pilot skills, I went with Engine Guru 1, which increases engine thrust by 3%, and that significantly improves aircraft acceleration. To increase our maneuverability, and, and again, with our pilot skills, we also want to have good synergy with our chosen equipment and our cho chosen consumables. I did go with Aerodynamics Expert, so all those effects that we had because of equipment where we increased our maneuverability, Aerodynamics Expert increases those effects uh, by 40%. Also went with Aerobatics Expert, which increases maneuverability in all axes by 2%. And, uh, you know, we did have an increase in chance of fire because of our equipment choices. So I did go with Fire resistant, Resistance, which reduces fire duration and damage by 20%. So big believer in that synergy between our equipment, between our consumables, and our pilot skills. It all works nicely together as a nice, neat package. And that's what you want with all your choices. In terms of uh, some stats for this aircraft, cumulative uh, damage per second is 660 for our forward firing weapons. Optimal distance for our forward firing weapons, 832 meters. So you want to certainly be under that. Uh, the difference between uh, the 800 meters that our forward firing weapons are said to have its range and the 832 for optimal distance, I think, is our maybe our long gun barrels. All right, in terms of... Boost duration, we have an 8 second boost and we can get up to 1,050 kilometers per hour, which is very nice. Cruising speed is 680 kilometers per hour. So dive speed, 1,200 kilometers per hour. So a very fast aircraft. That's the zoom and the zoom and boom. Maneuverability, we average time to turn 360 degrees is 10.3 seconds. So that's not, you know, super, but it's pretty darn good. Not bad for such a fast aircraft. Rate of roll is 140 degrees per second, which I think is very nice. Maximum optimal speed is 900 kilometers per hour. Stall speed is 250 kilometers per hour. So, wow, folks, this aircraft stalls easily. So keep that in mind. 250 kilometers per hour, this aircraft will stall. Maximum optimal altitude is 2,500 meters, so it is a high climber. Service ceiling is 4,500 meters. Rate of climb, 192 meters per second. It's very good stats there. In terms of our paint schemes, you are currently looking at marine, which is quite nice. This is desert, which I also really like winter and summer. We'll put desert on. I really like desert. Okay, so we've gone over my build and what we'll do now is head into a battle and see how the Swift performs. We'll do that now. Okay, so we will be fighting in our Specialist Swift over the Albion Gordion Knot Theater of Operation. Appropriate, off the British coast. And let's see, we will certainly go to the Command Center first. Be ready. And then from the Command Center we will go to the Ford Airstrip and 
see how it goes from there. Have the marine paint scheme for this combat. Lovely aircraft. If it only it had the maneuverability of the Spitfire in addition to all its speed, Pilot, right? Get ready for action. Let's go. All right, here we go. Nine hundred plus kilometers per hour there. All right. Target this light aircraft here. have a ground attack aircraft. I'll finish this fellow and then we'll head out and see what we can do about the ground attack aircraft. Get a little distance before he drops a bomb on us. Be advised, the enemy is concentrating forces near the airfield. Again, do not want to have a drum bomb dropped on me. That's a nice setup there. And we were really lucky there not to have a bomb dropped on us, but I'm like, well, I'll take the chance. What the heck? Sometimes it's better to be lucky than good, right? this fellow off. There we go. I don't quite have the sector yet though. Target this light aircraft here. Yuri snuck up behind us. Good job, Yuri. I didn't even see you there. You should pay attention to the mini map a little bit more. Okay, well, let's get back over there and see if we can't stop them from capping that command center. Right, we will address Yuri. sure we don't get snuck up on again. I'll pay a little bit more attention to that mini-map. He's on fire. Are we going to get him? Yeah, there we go. There's Yuri. What is chewing on us? was Yuri we just shot down there. That did get us the uh, sector which is very nice. We needed that. To see in these clouds isn't it? We 
we all we are stalling. This aircraft has a 250 kilometer per hour stall speed, so it does stall quite easily. Have to definitely be careful and mindful of that. Wow, he took a chunk out of us, didn't he? Let's see if we can finish him off before he gets us. Which we were able to do, thankfully. This is a uh, Kai 162. Probably definitely more maneuverable than we are. Biggest thing I found with a Kai is just not passing them up. It is easy to go right past them. Roll a little bit here to stay behind him. You see how slow he's going? Feel like feels like he's barely moving. Just hanging on here. I think this German aircraft is going to get us. Yep. Dieter. Dieter shut us down. Oh well. Good job, Dieter. Okay, team is doing fairly well. Do not have the airfield. Boy, that would be nice to have. Shorten down our trip back into the battlefield. Come on, clock. Get us back in. What do we have over here? We have a granite. Wow. A lot of aircraft there over by our command center. We're going to have to get over there. We're going to stop them. P228. You know what? Let's deal with this ground attack aircraft first and foremost. Got him. I think that was important. Luster. I'm beginning to think that plane really isn't there. <laughs> Holy cow, I cannot hit that thing. We'll do a little rolling here so we stay behind this guy. He's past the squall line, so he's not coming back. Got an I-211 up here. Which I can barely see in the clouds. Alright. What else do we have here? Richard. P1092. Got a friendly on him. Let's help him out. Alright. Ooh. That hurt a little. What is that? Defense aircraft. Way to go! Victory 
And we've got a Kai-162 on some of our teammates there. The enemy is almost defeated. Make a final push. But we also... Ah, well that's it. We'll be waiting for you back home. All right, folks. Victory. And let's see. We have Flying Warrior Badge. Conqueror, number one spot on the team. Four Chevrons on the grade rank. Subjugator and Effective Fire. I have a feeling we may have one or two more medals once we get back to the uh, hangar. Alright, so we did get a flying start added to our medal collection there. 130,000 and change in currency. Over 11,000 in experience points, 583 in free experience points, 14 kills, two sectors captured, uh, got the Avenger Accolade, we were shot down twice, but we did shoot down one of the enemy aircraft that had shot us down, it's that Avenger Accolade. 12,240 in combat points. So, uh, yeah, excellent result there for the Swift. I hope that you have really enjoyed this video. And if you get an opportunity to fly the Swift and at specialist level even, I hope you have great success in it.